I would like to thank the conference organisers for inviting me to speak on antiretroviral therapy. Is it time to change the paradigm? These are my disclosures. And I would also like to acknowledge the tens of thousands of people with HIV who participated in antiretroviral trials over the last 30 years that have informed the evidence base for HIV treatment today. In the time that I have, I will address the advent of two drug regimens, less frequent dosing with long acting injectables, and finally, the attributes of new regimens on the horizon. A number of paradigm shifts in antiretroviral treatment have occurred over the last 30 years and are listed here. However, in 2021, three drug regimens that include a second generation in integrase inhibitor remain the most commonly prescribed ART regimen. Fixed dose combination tablets with once daily dosing have revolutionised treatment for HIV. Once daily fixed dose combinations have been available in low and middle income countries for over 15 years. And of the 11 single pill co-formulated regimens available in high income countries, only two are two dose regimens. But the question is, are they any different to three drug regimens? Mm. Integrase strand transfer inhibitors are the preferred anchor drug in all antiretroviral guidelines due to their potency and tolerability. The WHO's preferred initial regimen is tenofovir disoproxyl fumarate, lamivudine and dolutegravir, or TLD. But in both European and US guidelines, the two drug combination of dolutegravir and 3TC has recently been included as a preferred initial regimen. But why would you use two drug regimens when current three drug regimens are potent and well tolerated? Well, the rationale for two drug regimens has been a reduction in the long-term drug exposure and consequently both acute and long-term adverse effects. But have the two drug regimens shown art-associated toxicity reductions and are there potential adverse consequences of two drug regimens? There are currently available two drug regimens for both initial therapy and for simplification maintenance therapy. Dolutegravir lamivudine is the only two, two drug formulation available for initial therapy with long acting injectable formulations of cabotegravir and rupivirine being recently approved as a simplification regimen. Now, not all regimens are created equal, and there are a number of factors that make the use of a two-drug regimen unsuitable. These include hepatitis B co-infection, and of course there are higher rates of hepatitis B infection in low and middle income countries, where they also have limited access to hepatitis B testing, making this regimen unsuitable, particularly as same-day art. For pregnant women, there is currently insufficient efficacy data on prevention of mother to child transmission with two drugs. Baseline resistance to either drug in the regimen is a contraindication and lack of access to baseline resistant testing in low and middle income countries adds additional concern about the use of a two drug regimen. But reassuringly, recent data um, on the transmitted drug resistance in the United States showed that only less than 1% was integrase uh, resistance and less than 1% showed the M184V mutation. Very high baseline viral loads and low CD4 cell counts are relative contraindications to two drug regimens, suggesting they may not be suitable as initial therapy in advanced HIV disease. And to address the dilemma of the safety and efficacy of dolutegravir mivudine when used in a test and treat strategy has been the conduct of the STAT trial. Um, 
and there will be further data uh, reported from this trial at this conference. So what is the data to support an initial two drug regimen? Considerations include virological outcomes, both potency and durability, and the development of resistance, adverse effects, and the impact of adherence with clinical outcomes and costs. In the Gemini studies, comparing dolutegravir and mivudine versus dolutegravir plus tenofovir disaproxyl fumarate and emtricitabine, comparable rates of virological suppression occurred throughout the study to week 144. So the concerns regarding durability of response have not been borne out. There was no difference in virological outcomes by baseline viral load, remembering that those with viral loads greater than 500,000 copies were excluded from the study. And virological responses at 82 to 84% are similar to those seen in recent studies of three drug regimens with Bictegravir, TAF, FTC, and Dolutegravir, TAF, FTC. There was also no difference in residual viremia using a target not detected assay between arms at all visits, regardless of baseline viral load. Virological outcomes were worse in both arms with suboptimal adherence, but was not different between arms. And the lower response in those with advanced disease and baseline CD4 cell counts of less than 200 remain unresolved issue. Virological failure with integrase inhibitor-based regimens in antiretroviral naive individuals are uncommon and rarely associated with resistance, but concern has been expressed that this might be more common with two drug regimens. There have only been two reports of virological failure and the develop of, development of resistance with the two drug dolutegravir and 3TC um, treatment as initial therapy. However, and these were both associated with poor adherence. Development of, of resistance with three drug regimens also occur, but these tend to occur in the setting of advanced HIV disease while poor adherence does not appear to be contributory. Unrecognised drug-drug interactions which lower integrase inhibitor concentrations will expose both two and three drug regimens to potential virological failure with resistance. What about adverse effects? Changes in renal and bone biomarkers, lipids and weight all reflect the presence or absence of tenofovir disaproxyl fumarate in the regimen. Weight gain was greater in the dolutegravir 3TC arm compared to the TDF FTC dolutegravir arm, but no study has compared a TAF based three drug regimen versus the two drug dolutegravir and mivudine regimen as initial antiretroviral treatment. What about two drug regimens as a switch or simplification strategy? Simplification from an induction to a maintenance regimen reduces the number of drugs in the regimen, reducing art exposure over the long term. And as we have no cure and art is for life, this might be beneficial. But while a proactive switch from a fully active, well-tolerated three-drug regimen has the possibility of reducing long-term side effects. It also introduces the possibility of loss of virological control with new adverse effects. Virological suppression was maintained for switching from a TAF-based three-drug regimen to dolutegravir and mivudine in the TANGO study, and from a stable three-drug regimen to dolutegravir rilpivirine in the SWORD studies. And this was regardless of demographics, baseline third agent, or CD4 cell count. What about residual viremia and the HIV reservoir? We know that art intensification of a three-drug regimen does not reduce residual viremia. 
but does reducing the number of drugs in a regimen increase residual viremia? Well, there was no evidence for increased residual viremia in either the TANGO or SWORD studies, and neither was there evidence for lower efficacy of a two-drug regimen in the central nervous system nor in genital secretions. As expected, when switching to a regimen with new drugs, rates of drug-related adverse events were higher in the switch arm of both TANGO and SWORD studies. At 48 weeks, weight gain was no different by arm in the TANGO study, but updated results being presented at this conference reveal greater weight gain in the dolutegravir lamivudine arm at week 96 and reflects the weight changes seen at week 48 in the DOLAM study. What about clinical outcomes of two drug versus three drug regimens? Well, there's no randomized controlled trial data, but observational data from the RESPOND cohort of about 10,000 patients of whom 1,000 switched to a two drug regimen showed that the crude incidence rates of severe disease in the two drug arm were higher, but however, the baseline prevalence of comorbidities was higher also in the two drug arm. When adjusting for age and other demographics, there was no difference in clinical outcomes between groups. And finally, cost. For the cost of generic TDF3TC dolutegravir, the WHO recommended first line regimen, which is $59 a year, the global cost of treating to 95, 95, 95 would be $2 billion per year. The current global expenditure on antiretrovirals is $28 billion a year. And if we look at the US, where the annual cost of dolutegravir, abacavir and 3TC in 2020 was $38,500 per person per year, this means you would need over $45 billion to treat all people with HIV. But the same regimen as a generic costs only $75 a year. And in the US alone, if initial art um, contained the dolutegravir 3TC regimen in 50% of people, there would be savings of up to $800 million in five years while switching 25% of those on art to dolutegravir and 3TC would save $3 billion in five years. So in summary, two drug regimens are as potent with durable efficacy compared with three drug regimens with no difference in adverse effects for initial art or clinical events and the potential for much lower cost. However, they are not suitable for all, including those diagnosed with advanced HIV disease or those with hepatitis B co-infection and archived resistance. So let's turn to less frequent dosing, the long-acting formulations of antiretroviral therapy. Three studies, FLAIR, ATLAS and ATLAS 2M, have demonstrated non-inferiority of durable virological suppression for up to five years after switching to long-acting injectable cabotegravir and rupivirine. Virological failure was uncommon at 1% to 2%, as was the development of resistance. And ATLAS 2M showed comparable efficacy when administration was dosed either four-weekly or eight-weekly. Adverse effects were more common in the long-acting cabotegravir rilpivirine arm. Injection site reactions occurred in the majority of people, but only 1% discontinued the study due to injection site reactions. The most were mild to moderate and resolved with seven, within seven days. There was no difference in weight gain between the long-acting injectables and a continued oral regimen. However, there will be challenges to treatment with the long-acting injectables and flexible healthcare delivery models 
will be needed to implement them in practice. Currently, those on two and three drug regimens require clinic monitoring visits either six or 12 monthly, but long-acting injectable uh, treatments require clinic visits monthly or two monthly for administration. Alter alternative methods of ad administration are being explored to allow self-injection. There was also no difference in virological suppression with comparable safety and tolerability found between those who had a four-week oral lead-in of cabotegravir ropivirine compared with those who went direct to the injection. And the long pharmacokinetic tail may cause problems when toxicity occurs, as the drug cannot be removed once administered and the metabolism and elimination of the drug cannot be accelerated. The long PK tail also has a disadvantage in the setting of suboptimal adherence. So while the long-acting long injectables have shown they are as potent as oral three drug regimens, the challenge of clinic visit administration, experience of injection site reactions, and the long pharmacokinetic tail will be a challenge to their widespread use. Switching to long-acting injectables can be of benefit to patients with pill fatigue, concerns about HIV status disclosure, or stigma associated with daily oral medication, and also to improve quality of life. However, just as with oral two drug regimens, there are a number of situations where long-acting cabotegravir and rupivirine are not suitable. And these include chronic hepatitis B infection and baseline resistance to either drug. It should be noted the safety of the long-acting injectables has not been established in pregnancy, and it is also not recommended when there is a history of suboptimal adherence to either treatment or clinic monitoring visits. So there is definitely a role for three drug art, especially for those that are unsuitable for two drug regimens. And there is also a large population of people with HIV who are long-term survivors carrying the legacy of early, less potent antiretroviral treatment and with accumulation of resistance mutations. These individuals will require three drug art, potentially with new agents. There are a number of new drugs in new classes being studied currently in phase two and three trials from the capsid protein inhibitors, maturation inhibitors, and fusion inhibitors. All are being investigated as potential two drug regimens with dosing frequencies ranging from daily to six monthly and with both oral and injectable options. Many of these studies are being updated at this conference. So it is time to change the paradigm. And the new paradigm should be to embrace all options to individualize art. The current paradigm of three drug regimens is not a one size fits all. We need to reach and treat as many people as possible for both the public health benefits of eliminating new transmission of HIV, as well as the personal health benefits. Two drug regimens have earned their place in treatment options. The reduction in art associated toxicity has not been convincingly shown as yet, and their use in the low and middle income setting may be constrained by limited access to hepatitis B and HIV resistance testing. There are also a number of data gaps that need to be addressed. The use of two drug regimens in pregnancy, same day art test treat strategies, their role in TB co-infection, the effect on the HIV reservoir, and the impact of archived M184V. 
And finally, the use of long-acting injectables in people with suboptimal adherence requires further evaluation. So I would like to acknowledge friends and colleagues who provided feedback and help with this uh, presentation, and also my patients who are a constant source of inspiration to find better treatments for better health and quality of life. Thank you.